Ohoho. All right. Greetings and salutations, everybody. My name is Michael Schwann. Today is Sunday, January 29th, 2023. Hello. Welcome. So today we are, it's production day. We're going to be working on recording all the raw footage for the YouTube videos that will be going up over the next seven days. Uh, so the plan today is the long form video that will go up next Sunday is going to be the my most anticipated games of 2023 and then we do have reactions today and our reactions that we're going to be checking out today for the games that are coming out this week is deliver us mars parish hails the backbone preludes um inkle and naughty and S season a letter to the future and undisputed uh there's not really any major releases going on this week the major releases mostly happened over the last like nine days because we had about a week and two days ago, uh, nine days ago on February, February, bleh, on January 20th was Fire Emblem Engage. On Tuesday, January 24th was Forspoken. And then on 26th or the 27th or whatever was is Dead Space, the Dead Space remake. And so we don't really have anything major coming out this week. Uh, February does start to pick up quite a bit more. February is very, very full. Uh, and then it just kind of keeps going through March. February will have a lot of games that are coming out. And March has a, pr it, a lot of the games that were coming out in February that were not positioned to do well because of other games that were coming out in February are now being moved to March and April, which does thankfully spread out that release like window a bit. So that we'll actually, you know, release in a... Uh, a time frame that makes sense so that people can actually buy and play the games that they want before other games that they want to buy and play come out. But, alas, we're also going to be playing Stream Raiders alongside everything today. Let me go ahead and get that started. Athena, I did not like that game. Got a neat concept, but I did not like it. So, uh, you were playing Spelunky 2, which I will tell you from my own personal experience, I played Spelunky and I felt very, very similarly about it. I played it for maybe 30 minutes. And that's a maybe. I don't know if it was even actually 30 minutes. I played it not a whole lot. It was not a whole lot. Where's my archer? Uh, it was definitely, definitely not much. Not much at all. And I was like, you know, I see what this game is doing. I see what it's going for. I, I see... Like what you're what you're attempting, um, but I am not finding this fun. Like I know some people really really love Spelunky, but I did not find it enjoyable. Unfortunately, unfortunately. But I guess you know every game isn't for everybody. So alas, here we are. Uh, we need to go over this screen. All right. Like I said, we got some raw footage -y stuff to do and take care of today, so we're just going to get straight into it. Uh, let, me, let me make sure these are in the order that I want them to be. I think I actually want to swap these. They don't get uploaded in this order, but that it makes it easier for recording purposes. Word of the day, alas. Is that what it is? You like this hat, Athena? Look at it. It's so good. Neat. Although. 
<laughs> it's not centered. <laughs> it's close, but this is definitely not in the center of the brim. Anyway, what is that from? Uh, the uh, random ass website that it it was very it, it was very inexpensive. Came from Al uh, Alibaba, AliExpress, one of those. Good morning, Herr Foxig. Hello. Hello. Okay, I actually got to change the. These need to be open like this. Let me get this one set up first. There we go. Go like this. All right. So what we're gonna be doing, everybody. Uh, as I already mentioned, we'll be recording the raw uh, footage for my most anticipated games of 2023. We've got six uh, reactions that we'll be recording. Uh, Tales, uh, The Backbone Preludes, Deliver Us Mars, Pr Perish, Inkle and Naughty, Season, A Letter to the Future, and Undisputed. Uh, and I think, uh, the, yeah, that's the order that I want them in, too. Uh, and so the way that we redo these reactions, uh, we record them live on stream because it makes for a more interactive and dynamic experience, both for myself as the content creator, as, P as well as other people that will be watching it later on YouTube. Uh, the way this works, I'll read an intro off of my head. We'll check out the trailer together. And then when, uh, then, then after the trailers, we'll talk about it. We'll share our thoughts and stuff like that. And then when it feels like the conversation is starting to wrap itself up or, you know, it's just time to go, I will read an outro. Uh, and then afterwards, we'll make faces. Face gets used in the thumbnail. Rinse and repeat. If I can get to a spot where I can. There we go. I love the Shinra hat you had there last time. It's here somewhere. There's a lot of hats. <laughs> it is my only Final Fantasy hat. But that's also partially because, because of what her fucking just said. That there isn't much Final Fantasy merch that is good. Um, that ain't completely out of reach. Yeah, because, like, here, I'll just show you real quick. Square Enix store. Like, if we go to the Square Enix store, holy shit, Square Enix is so fucking high on themselves. Like, like, well, let's just go to their fucking jewelry real quick, okay? Do, do you want the most basic ass looking fuck? Like, it's cute, right? It's cute. But, but it, it, it's like a little glass ring with some, with some heartless on it. 250! Fifty dollars. Here, let me let me make sure you can you can see that price real good. Two hundred and fifty dollars for a a ring. Oh, you want you want a basic ass fucking trifold wallet? It ain't it ain't not made out of some premium leather or anything like that. Four hundred and seventy dollars. For the most basic ass little fucking trifold wallet you've ever seen in your life that just happens to have a, a uh, near automata emblem on it. $470. Um, do they even still have a clothing section? Apparel. Okay, here we go. Let's go into the apparel. All right. So, you, you know, just your basic ass graphic tee, you know, just, just regular graphic tee, $40. Premium pricing, right? Hyper premium pricing. They don't have anything basically that isn't a fucking t-shirt. You want the most basic ass fucking chocobo necktie you've ever seen in your life? Like, look at this. Look, 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 look at the print. Oh god, where'd that? Where'd the bigger picture go? It was here. It's gone. Load, load the picture. There you go. See, just like some basic chocobo print. Sixty-five dollars. Sixty-five dollars. If we got anything even any fancier than that? Oh yeah, sure. We have the cheapest looking, thinnest, saddest looking athletic jacket you've ever seen in your life. These are the ones that your school like has in a throwaway bin that they don't want you to wear because they look like garbage. One hundred and seventy dollars. Like I remember that Square Enix put out um, for Final Fantasy XV, you were able to buy Noctis's shirt. Which is Noctis shirt. So his shirt, right? Wow, whoever made this for 20 bucks. So Noctis' shirt, right? It's it's a black t-shirt with some fucking skulls on it, right? You can buy it apparently on here for $20 from Zhao Maomi. 
but when when it when the game came out and Square Enix released official merch, one of the pieces of official merch was fucking Noctis' shirt. It was like I am not joking, like a hundred and fifteen dollars. Me and my friends have a have well, me and a certain group of friends, we have an inside joke that is literally called the Square Enix tax. Of that, if it comes, if it is a Square Enix property, it will be twice the price that it normally should be, if not more. Because that it's the Square Enix tax. Doesn't matter what it is. Like, they will just, it, it won't be as nice as anything else is. It won't look as good. And it'll be two or three times the price. I felt that same way forever about their Play Arts High line. Because, like, I, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Let me grab. Let me let me grab an example. Okay. So, look at Tifa here, right? Just look at Tifa, right? So, I have always had a problem with their play out player sky. One, they're meant to be action figures so they can move and shit, right? And I always feel like the joints look super weird, but they're their faces look strange. Like they're they're just not as high end as something like this. This is Cosmos from freaking Xenoblade Chronicles 2, technically from freaking Xeno Xenosaga. And just the quality difference of this compared to this, like looking at these two figures, nowhere near the same. Nowhere near the same, and I will tell you that they are the same price. They were the same price. Now, mind you, Cosmos doesn't move, but I still don't accept that as a reasonable excuse for why the Play Arts Kai figures just look so much worse. Oh, you're talking about the uh, the grab bags. Uh, where are they? Are they still in here? Per fucksig? Are they still in here? I know which ones you're talking about. Here they are. Yeah, so these are the ones that her fucksig was talking about. The original polygon figures that look like the characters from the original game. These are cool, right? However, it's $64 for... Now, mind you, this is not the set. This is for a blind box of eight. You can't actually order these individually. You gotta blind bag them. You gotta fucking loot box them in order to try to get these. The music box I got was $20, which is reasonable. Why the hell would they want to put that on there for shipping? It even came from Germany. Or oh, I ordered music box plays main Final Fantasy 17 from F and I almost didn't give it to her because I'm gonna cry because it's so cute. Well, if we want to go with music boxes, uh, hang on. Maybe it's under miscellaneous. Do they have a search option? Um, music. Oh, actually, hang on. It would, it would probably be easier to search under Google. Here it is. So this is a Buster Sword alarm clock. You can get a relative idea of how big it is. It is just regular ass molded plastic with a freaking display on here that is akin to what you would see on a watch that you'd get out of a of McDonald's Happy Meal toy. toy. Like, it does change colors, right? But this is not some like high-end display. This is the cheapest display that you could have possibly imagined. It can change into what, what, five different colors? Blue, red, purple, green, and yellow. So the, the five different colors of materia. And it has like six songs from Final Fantasy VII that it can play. But you can see in the picture, you can see the mold lines for how cheap this thing was put together. $200. $200. Dollars for this for a couple of really cheap LEDs in the most sad ass half mold plush together cheapo look how shitty this looks in their official can I make it bigger can I make it bigger please god let me make it bigger uh, open image a new tab you can see the scuffs on the screen, it's not coming through here uh, here very well, but I, I you you can see them. You can see just how 
There we go. Look how messed up the screen is in their official marketing for it. In their official marketing. And they want to charge you $200 for this. $200. Oh, you want just the most regular ass fucking wallet? Just the most regular wallet that has a Shinra pin on it? $370. $370. The fuck? Yeah, it's the Square Enix ad. It's awful. It's stupid. I hate it. Sort by price. Can, can we just sort the... Oh, yeah. Here it is. Let, let's not forget about, about the 1-6 scale statue. Now, I will say, this is a nice statue, okay? The statue of Terra from Final Fantasy uh, VI. This is a pretty good looking statue. It's got a lot of detail on it. Looks really cool. That said, that said, is it $14,000 cool? Is it $14,000? Hang on, let me go grab another prop. Okay, hang on. Okay. All right. I don't expect anyone to know who this is, and that's okay. So this character's name is, is Exusiate. Uh, she is an angel from a mobile phone game originally that also turned into like an anime and some other stuff called uh, Ark Knights. Now, this isn't as complex as Terra, right? This isn't as complex as Terra is here. Like, Terra's on a full Magitek walker and stuff like that. But this is not small, okay? And there's lots of detail. Exusier sit standing on a rock. The rock's painted. She's got this big halo of guns behind her. All of the guns are individually modeled and painted, right? Right? Like, this thing is... This thing's pretty... This thing's pretty detailed. Like, is pretty well painted. Her hair's got nice shading and everything on it, right? Got a pretty decent amount of detail. It was... It, I, think, I think it was $180. That's a lot, okay? I'm not gonna pretend like that's, like, a small amount to pay for a fucking hunk of PVC plastic with some paint on it. But that thing's pretty impressive, okay? Like, freaking Cosmos there was also, like, $200. I had to import Cosmos from Japan. Like, but those are both, like, even Cosmos, while Cosmos isn't standing on anything, right? Cosmos still has some decent detail in, like, the weapons and stuff, right? But it's 200 not 14000 14 thousand she also came with different expressions that's true you can put cosmos's helmet and stuff on like people had already given square a ton of flack for this near automata figure which mind you i think this near automata figure is really freaking cool it's got 2b 9s and a2 all standing on top of some broken robots this is super cool there's technically a version of it where you can get like 2B without clothes, I think. I think there's a, a clothesless 2B version in here. Yeah, you have to buy it completely separately if you want 2B to not have uh, her freaking dress on and instead just, you know, be dressed this way. Same with A2. Um, but people gave them piles of shit for this being almost $3,000. $3,000. And this is pretty cool, right? I still don't think it's $3,000 cool, but it's pretty cool because, but hang on, <laughs> let me go grab one more prop. Now, so. Ignore that she's missing half of her head because I got this second hand and the back of her head is missing. But here's 2B, okay? Here's 2B, and we'll go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and play this and keep it muted and stuff. And we're gonna compare this model that I have on screen to the statue that's in there, okay? Like you can definitely tell that it's you know not quite as good, but 
it this is pretty good right got some nice little detail in the dress you can actually technically take her top half off and remove this dress part if you want her to be like naked like the way that she is if she loses her dress and stuff right but this even brand new with like with a complete head and not missing the back half of her head if you hold it at the right angle it still works okay if you, if, if you look at it from the right direction don't look at it from the direction i'm looking at it's kind of horrifying uh anyway you look at it from the right direction um but even if it was brand new with the back half of her head and everything this is like i think like 85 dollars. i got it second hand so i think i paid and it, because it was missing the back half i think i paid like 24 dollars for it because yeah but again is is there more detail in this one on screen yeah sure you know she's got like some detail on the the dress that mine doesn't have probably is a little bit more detail in the hair and she probably has a complete head which mine doesn't but three thousand dollars i don't know where to put this anyway yeah square enix merch doesn't exist and the merch for square enix properties that does exist is prohibitive is obnoxious the square enix tax task it tax is is insulting it is absolutely insulting you want to you want a cute watch that's inspired inspired by Aerith Gainsborough fucking three hundred and twelve dollars you want you want just the most basic ass fucking clock that just has a picture just a printed out JPEG of Sephiroth in the background hundred and thirty dollars I go go to fucking Walmart buy the most generic ass fucking clock that you've seen that you see them have it like schools you know the ones I'm talking about the white casing the black casing with the white background grab one of those print this out on your printer and shove it in there and it's basically gonna feel the same way and you're gonna spend eight dollars instead of a hundred and thirty dollars because Square Enix is full of themselves to the most obnoxious amount it's insane and I hate them for it. We just got, look, look at this fucking cloud, okay? One, I do appreciate, I, I will give them props for making the cloud in the dress statue, right? The cloud in the dress statue, but this just doesn't look good enough for the price that they asked. This is $200. My fucking, uh, freaking bootleg secondhand version of 2B I feel like looks better than this most of the time and like their hair looks like something that you would get out of one of those plastic blisters like you know like the fake GI Joe toys that you get from a dollar store I feel like that's the level of quality that they put into their hair look at this look at this open image a new tab make it bigger like look at his hair what did you do to clouds hair why does it look like this You can even add a buster hand, hour hand out of painted cardboard. Yeah, yeah. It's it's sad. They should be ashamed. They should just be ashamed of themselves. Also, like seriously, can we just can I can I take just one more moment to like just talk about how distracting these joints are? I understand that having joints on a model would be difficult in general. But there's gotta be ways to make it look better than this. Like, there's gotta be ways. I'm sure there's a way that you could make it look better, but it would probably cost more money than Square Enix is willing to spend, okay? That's probably the problem, is Square Enix is like, yeah, but we would have to actually, like, spend money. And if we spend money, how are we supposed to make all of the money? Disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. No, I've about exhausted it. But thank you, Athena. You're right. I could probably... $700 for a fucking chess set that you can't even play chess on, I should point out, by the way. This chess board, you literally can't play chess on it. It's not that it, like, you need to play it at an angle or anything like that. People have bought it, and they're like, it actually just doesn't have the room for you to play chess on it. You cannot play a normal game of chess. Like, even if you wanted to turn it, like, crookedy and, like, try to play along the fucking normal lanes, like, if you wanted to, like, try and go straight this way, you can't. It literally doesn't have a standard chess board anywhere on here. You want to know what else? 
You want to know what else? It doesn't even it doesn't include a rule book for how to play bullshit ass Kingdom Hearts chess either. It's just a decoration. You can't play it unless you make up the rules your damn self. There's not a chess board in here. There's a the, the, there's fucking pieces. There's a bunch of pieces and it's a cool chess board, but it's also seven hundred dollars. It even oh. When did they add this shit? This is not a game. No rules are included. That didn't used to be there. That didn't used to be there. play arts kai why is this so expensive like why why hang on one last time Michael's a fucking idiot. Schwan is a chode that doesn't make good decisions. That's what that says, okay? I know that's not what that actually said, but that's what that says in essence, okay? I opened this at one point in time. Let me show you what's in here. Okay? Because at some point, it needs to not be in here. So in this box, in this little boxy box we got here. Stay. This is what's in this box. I can get this on camera, okay? This was from the collector's edition of Final Fantasy VII, and it includes a fully modeled version. I've never actually opened this. It includes a fully modeled version of the Hardy Daytona, the iconic motorcycle that Clyde, Rau Clyde rides, Cloud rides, good at English, in Final Fantasy VII, okay? This was, this was the major part of the Final Fantasy VII Collector's Edition, was to get this, okay? It was the only way to get this, was if you bought the Collector's Edition of Final Fantasy VII Remake. You want to know how much the collector's edition of Final Fantasy VII Remake is as we just continue to talk about, like, bad financial decisions? I love those freaking anime figures that I showed you, but I'm not going to pretend like they were smart purchases, okay? Exusia, in particular, was actually a bad purchase. I thought I was pu putting myself on, like, a, on a reserve list. I fucking bought it. <laughs> anyway, the collector's edition... Of Final Fantasy VII Remake was like $330. That includes the game, that included an art book, that included a soundtrack, that included that model, and a bunch of other shit, a steel book, an extra case. It's actually right here, the full deluxe edition. What's all in this again? You got three boxes. Oh no, you got two boxes. You got the steel case and the fucking game box and... And, a, and a, another box and an art book and stuff. It was $330, okay? Now, I'm not going to pretend like that's, like, okay, right? I think that's actually, that the Hardy Daytona is actually a really fucking cool model, and it includes Cloud and everything in there with a bunch of accessories and stuff. It's actually pretty cool, right? But why is this, then, $410? 
Look at this fucking motorbike that comes with it. They're just riding a generic ass fucking. Look at this. Look at this bike. This bike looks like something that my army men would ride. Like, why? Why? Is the box made of the thinnest cardboard imaginable? Yes. Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> but no, it was only 300, only $330, okay? I think. Uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake Collector's Edition MSR, MSRP. I think it was three, yeah, 330, 329. I was exactly right. It's like I remember what I spent my fucking money on. Anyway, so why is this fucking $410? Like, this is excessively priced. I I don't understand. Square Enix tax. How would you want to bet, like, they increased the price just because they felt like it? They're like, well, we had to figure out how to get two models to fit on one bike. So that's why, clearly. But is it missing my girl, Jessie? Uh, is that one? Yes. Yes, it is, unfortunately. Imagine I got the Undertale collection with a locket that's also a music box, art book, the complete soundtrack, sheet music, and the game for $40 in a very nice box. Yes. I believe you. I believe you entirely. Anyway, yeah. So, Square Enix tax. It's a big pile of bullshit. No freaking merch exists in the slightest for fucking anything within Square Enix. And what does exist is the most overpriced, excessive, stupid shit imaginable. And I hate it. All right, anyway, what were we doing? <laughs> Probably running the fucking battle because I've been ranting for a half hour. That would be correct. <laughs> that would be correct. It's fine. Uh, it, it really is absolutely fine. Uh, I do need to close that, though. Square Enix shipping as well on top of the tax. Yeah. Square Enix's shipping is... Oh, God. Do we want to talk about that, too? Fucking G... Final Fan... Speak... Speaking of... Speaking of... I for... I had almost forgot that I ordered this bitch. It will, unfortunately, not be here the day that the game releases. Yeah, I was born in 1911. No, no, where's the collector's edition? Collector's edition. Show me the collector's edition. Yeah, so there's the collector's edition of Final Fantasy 16. Now $350. $350. Uh, and it, it comes with an, another big statue. This is a static statue. Do they have a good picture? Uh, yeah, so they have a decent picture. And it's it, it's Ifrit fighting uh, Phoenix, which this picture is, is pretty good. We'll see how this turns out when it actually gets here. Um, but we'll, we'll see. Cause I, 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 I did, I do have this coming on the way because I admittedly, when it comes to Final Fantasy, I'm a fucking tool. I am a tool. These pins look kind of cool too. Uh, the pins of the icons. Also the, just the, the general summons of the Final Fantasy universe. So, but yeah, the shipping on Square Enix stuff has gotten insane. I don't, I, th I think I actually only paid like $21 or something to have the Final Fantasy VII Collector's Edition shipped to me. Square Enix charged me fucking $80 to ship the Final Fantasy XVI Collector's Edition. 80 goddamn dollars. I was upset. I paid it anyway, but I was upset. I was very upset. Ugh. You got, you got Square Enix store points for spending money in our online shop. Use them. No. No. Because in their fucking reward shop, it goes the other direction, okay? It goes the other direction. So welcome to the Square Enix members reward section. What's in here? Nothing. You can get an art book for Just Cause 3. You can get uh, some buttons for Kingdom Hearts. You can get a fucking yo-yo. You want a yo-yo? How about a lanyard? How about really cheap eco red bags? 
that are so narrow that they had to use a rolled up towel and a water bottle of examples of what you could fit in them. Because you're not fitting a gallon of milk in this. You are you could fit maybe, maybe a box of cereal laying down on its side. You could fit a, a, a two boxes of crackers. Maybe. You could maybe fit two boxes of crackers. You can get a Star Ocean Integrity card. There's nothing in here. There's a lanyard. You want a lanyard that they'll probably charge you. I don't want to know how much to mail to you. So I used to check the Square Enix member rewards section quite often, but then things just started to disappear. You used to be able to get cool shit. You used to be able to get jackets and backpacks and stuff like that. And then they've slowly just no... 385 points for a fucking ornament? Are you fucking kidding me right now? Are you serious? For an ornament that you've screen printed on a chocobo onto? To give you an example, just to, just to, just a little just a little example, just a little example. You can roughly equate 1 point to $1, okay? 1 point to $1. So when I spent the $330 for the Final Fantasy VII Remake Collector's Edition, I got 330 points, which means that all of the points that I got from the Collector's Edition of Final Fantasy VII, I could not have redeemed to get this shitty-ass little screen-printed ornament. It's flat. That looks like a button rather than a real ornament. You used to be able to get them, but they were never in stock. You are correct, Athena. So you doubt they had any to begin with? I bet they had like 10, and the 10 got claimed, and then they just never pr produced anymore. And this is why, I'm not gonna go get them, but over in the other side of the room, in a tub, across in the corner, I have 30 Square Enix scarves. Because the only thing that was in stock was their scarves. And I was like, I need to use these points on whatever I can get before I don't have access to the points anymore. And so I used all of the points I had on scarves and I need to give them away at some point anyway 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 Square Enix you make a lot of shit that I really like a lot but you also do a lot of shit that I really don't fucking like and I'm gonna keep buying your games anyway I just got done playing I got I just beat for spoken and I love the ever living hell out of it I'm gonna keep playing it and I'm really ready for Final Fantasy 16 and the rest of Final Fantasy 7 Remake Trilogy and Final Fantasy 7 Crisis Core and whatever the hell you make next. But you piss me off. Because you're bullshit. Bullshit. Anyway. Alright. Run that battle and then actually start doing production day. Look at this lovely healer. It's so pretty. I love it. How do we get this? Can you get this? You can't buy it. It doesn't belong to somebody. Is it in the battle pass and I just didn't see it? Do I already have it? Is it in here? Is it in the store? It's not from the skin chest, is it? Oh, I can't look. And you can't even combine reward shop points and main merch with shipping. No, no, you cannot. How do we get this? Is it in the store? They don't have like a... Can't remember how to get her? Okay. I assume it might be from this event, but I don't actually know. It's an epic. Maybe the original battle pass to that event? Yeah, maybe. I wish I could see what was in the skin chest. I didn't see her in the battle pass down here. No, I don't see it. I, I can't. Like, because it's a question mark, I can't click on the skin chest because it says unknown chest, even though I can clearly see that it's a skin chest. I already tried to do that, but that it didn't work because rude. All right, anyway. Anyway. Fucking Square Enix. 
Get him, El Canadiano. Kill them all. What I should do, what I should do, is uh, that whole little bit that we just had, that should be part of production day, and I should edit that into a fucking video. <laughs> that needs to just be a video that goes on to YouTube as it is. Fifty gold can be yours for four hundred and twenty channel points. Most kills going to El Canadiano. Most assists going to Dialu. We'll see. We'll see. Athena with the gold. Um, the enemies are kind of spread all over the Bloomin' place, aren't they? I didn't get credit for placing that archer? What? Oh, it's, it has now changed to place rogues. Okay, that's... Whatever, I guess. We'll go down here and we'll place a barbarian. Place your units, everybody. All right. Now we'll actually get into uh, what we were doing. Okay. So, I will say again, we're doing production day. We're going to start with some reactions. We're also going to be recording the raw footage for my most anticipated games of 2023. Uh, our first reaction is going to be Tales, the Backbone Preludes. Um, the way that this works, I read an introduction. We'll check out the trailer. We'll talk about the trailer. And then we'll uh, I will read an outro. And then we make faces. Face gets used in the thumbnail, rinse and repeat. We do these live on stream because it makes for a more interactive and dynamic experience, both for myself as a content creator, as well as people that will be watching it later on YouTube. All righty then. Let's actually get started. All right. And if you would like, everybody, if you are a subscriber, you have access to this animated YouTube swan emote. Uh, if you are not a subscriber, um, I was tempted to just, you, you know what? You know what? Let's just, let, me, let me just do it real quick. Uh, B, 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 T, T, V. Oh, I don't know if I can. Because I don't think, I think I tried and I didn't have one that's the right, um, size. I think is why I couldn't do it already. I believe I tried, but couldn't. Maybe. Hey, it worked. Reload the chat for myself real quick, and then check it, YouTube Swan. All right, it's in there. Okay, so if you have BTTV, you can just put in YouTube Swan, and, and you'll be able to put it in that way. Uh, if you're a subscriber, you'll have access to it. Otherwise, um, you can put that, oh, sh oh, I, wait, I can do it this way. And now, now it should work. Yeah, and that was the BTTV one. Okay, you can, if you have BTTV, you can put in YouTube Swan. If you're a subscriber, it's YT Swan. Um, either way, it's just a way to say hi to the new YouTube video. You can put in any other emote you want, whether it's for my channel or anyone else's. Something cute, something happy, something attention grabbing or whatever. Uh, put in those YouTube Swans, and then we'll go ahead and put in your emotes of choice, and then we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, I did wipe the chat, so if you already said hi, you'll need to say hi again. A little warrior boy. He's so cute. All right. Anyway. <sighs> oh, I need to do one more thing, actually. Which is go in this and go in this. All right. Here we go. 
Greetings and salutations. My name is Michael Schwann, and today we are checking out Tales of the Backbone Preludes. Now, Tales of the Backbone Preludes is actually a sequel, I think, to a game just called Backbone. And we're going to be checking the trailers out for that as well to try and get a complete picture of both where what this game is coming from and where it's at now. Uh, these games are like cinematic exploration. I got kind of like a detective vibe from them as I was just really initially getting into like grabbing the trailers and looking at the screenshots and stuff. Uh, this game does release very, very soon. It releases on February 2nd, which might be the day that this video actually went up, but we'll wait and see. Because uh, I won't know until I'm done with this. Anyway, so we'll go all the way back to Backbone, a dystop dystopian pixel art noir adventure. Uh, and then we'll actually see how we get from there to Tales the Backbone Preludes. So, let's go. He's a raccoon. I'm so impressed what people are doing with pixel art nowadays. Pixel art was always impressive, but people are really trying to expand it way more. What are you doing in that kitchen? So that was just the initial. Oh, this is out now on Steam. Did I grab these in the wrong order? No, that's three years ago. So what are these? Backbone out now on PC. What? All right. Well, anyway, we'll just play the next one. <laughs> played Backbone a few weeks ago, and it was pretty great. Highly anticipating this prequel. Oh, well. Well, thank you. Thank you for that information. That was just the opening title cinematic. So, the role-playing detective adventure is the name of this trailer. It's very similar to the one we just saw. Hope it's different. Just had the same beginning. Need to tell my friend Adam to play this. Be like, yo, you like hard-boiled detective stories? Here you go. First Backbone is more like a visual novel than a game, though. That's all right. It's got a really good aesthetic. That was a different code than the first time. And then we have the new release date trailer. I feel like they needed to update. Oh, this was the prologue. Okay, so the prologue. So it was almost like a demo. The, the full game released like last year. Or at 2021, I think, is actually when it released. Oh, my bottle's empty. Just my luck. It's been raining the last three days. My umbrella broke last week. Like that a detective is a raccoon. Yeah, he's, he's got a, he's got a, he's got to sort through all the trash. No one else can but him. Holy shit! That dude had a fucking sword. Oh my god. And then this is the launch trailer for Backbone, and then we'll actually get into the, the prequel trailers. 
He's having a rough night. Yeah, he's gotten beat up a few. It, it might not all be the same night, but we watched him get beat up about four different times. Went real well for him. Real, real well for him. Stop it. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to move on from... So that released, yeah, back in June of 2021. Uh, moving now forward to February of 2023, uh, we'll get to see the next game in the series that is a prequel called Tales, the Backbone Preludes. Oh, that's before it all went bad. I was moving in, you know, to a new town, a new job. Seems to just never be able to find my way out from the bottom of a bottle, though. Somebody came looking for help. I was so down on my luck and out of money that I didn't have the ability to turn them away. I didn't have any other choice. Little did I know the trouble that that would get me in. It, it was just me, my vest, and my camera. <laughs> Alright, this is the actual release date announcement trailer. There wasn't a launch trailer or anything else like that. Just these two short trailers for it, which is one of the reasons that we grabbed the uh, uh, the full like story of the backbone. Um, also, so that we just had a, a better idea of what everything was and how it was going. Howard Loter? Lator? His name is Howard? Clarissa Bloodworth. plays all four of them i guess i guess if i would have thought about it and i wasn't memeing so much you would kind of get that vibe from where that screen go yeah this one the the like four walking shots or the prequel is host have story branches and stuff i'm thrilled I'm, i get the general impression that it will and you'll be playing as more people than just the raccoon so interesting i'm glad that i'm glad that you're here to say that it's fun her fuck's sake because that's a uh, that that's good to know uh it looks really I'm not going to say cute. There is a cuteness to it, but it definitely has a, a charming. Charming's a good word. So, anyway, that's Tales the Backbone Preludes. Um avail you can already play what's going to be the original version like I already mentioned it's out already on Steam. This one which is the prequel is coming out on February 2nd. I don't know if it would be better to play the prequel first. That's always one of those questions that you can, like, kind of ask of, like, you know, if it's the, the prequel to the main game, should I play the prequel first? Or will it be cool seeing keep people where people came from if I already know who they are? And it's kind of hard to really get those kind of questions unless you can ask somebody who has played both games in one of those two circumstances, right? But either way, that's cool. Looks enjoyable. Um, out of curiosity, actually... Because the main page doesn't have the price listed on it. But how much is uh, $25 for the original game? Okay. I don't feel like that's too bad. But it definitely feels like a price that I would probably want to just like wait for a, a decent sale for. I don't Maybe not like a 50% uh, sale. But it's really cool art. The game doesn't jump out at me strong enough that I'm like, yeah, I'd pay $25 for that. My suggestion is to wait until a sale. Good to know. Okay. I don't know how much Tales of the Backbone Preludes will be. might be the same. It might be a little bit less. It will also be a question of size. It might even end up being a little bit more if they put more into it and it got, if, if it's a larger release. But we won't know, at least at the point of this recording. But let me know what your thoughts are. If you have played the original Backbone, let me know how you enjoyed that game. If you enjoyed it, what your thoughts were when you were playing it. Uh, if this is the first time seeing Backbone or Tales of the Backbone Preludes, let me know how you feel about it. Are they games that you might be interested in or you just think they look nice or you just not care? Uh, let me know. If you want to keep up the conversation elsewhere, two great places to do so are Discord and Twitter. Speaking of Discord, we have a channel dedicated to these reactions where you can place links of your own that we can check out together live on stream because we do stream on Twitch and I would love to see you there. If you enjoyed this video, please leave it a like. If you want to catch future videos, please subscribe to the channel. If you do watch one of the other videos on the channel or if I see you in the live stream, thank you and enjoy.
Even though I really loved it, the music is solid and the pixel art is too. I think playing the original first is a good idea because you might ruin the plot for yourself if you do it the other way around. Ah. I put all of the statues in the spots where I normally put the hats. I've made a... I've made a mistake. I have made an error. Oh no, it, it, it's perfectly fine. It is not actually a big deal in the slightest. Just means I'll need to put some stuff back after I uh, after we get done with stream. All right, everybody. Put in your new set of YouTube swans or any other emote that fits your fancy. It can be from my channel or any others. You can do the pog swan, the high swan, the re swan, or just really any swan at all. Or, you know, just drop in some, some cute little blobs from someone else. Let me see how we're doing on the, the battle. We should be fine on time. We are. Okay. Do, 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 do. All right. Greetings and salutations. My name is Michael Schwann and today we are checking out Deliver Us Mars. Now we checked out Deliver Us Mars like six, seven months ago. And it was before we were doing the reactions the way that we do them today. Deliver Us Mars is now releasing on February 2nd, 3rd, now, basically now, yeah, February 2nd, yeah. And I remember when we watched that original couple of trailers that we did for Deliver Us Mars, the biggest issue that I had is I couldn't tell what the game, like, was. I just saw that you lived, existed on Mars, and that's it. This is, I don't know if it's technically a direct sequel, but it is the next game uh, following Deliver Us the Moon, uh, which I don't know enough about that game either. But that's kind of what we're here for. There have been more trailers that have put out since then. I am going to go back and get the original reveal trailer uh, that was put out in March. And then we'll have a gameplay trailer, the story trailer, and the countdown to launch trailer just to hopefully give us a little bit more. The reveal trailer is kind of going to be there to brush us up a little bit because we did already see this like seven months ago when we did the initial reaction for the game. But it's here for completeness sake and also just so that we can maybe like get back onto a ground of trying to understand what's going on here. What is this trailer that's right here? Journey to the Red Planet. I don't have that one, and it says eight months ago. You know what? We'll just grab it right now. Why not? Okay, anyway, let's go. In-engine footage. Looks like we crashed on Mars. That sucks. Not a good place to crash land. WSA, is that the World Space Association? Good job surviving. Congratulations, I think. I want some scientists to tell me why a Red Rebel ice pick would not be the suitable tool of choice on Mars. Wheatley. Because 100% humans would pro, we we would absolutely program a robot to respond to being petted. Robot says we shouldn't go over there. I will listen to the robot. 
course, I mean, if you're on Mars, there might not be anywhere else to go or anything else to do. All right, let's see what this Journey to the Red Planet trailer is. Humans are always trying to pet everything. I know. I like Five, petting things. Four, three, two, one, zero. Hi. Ignition. Oh, the little penguin said hello. The story of Gulliver's Mars is going to be awesome. Yeah, huh? <laughs> It'll be awesome because it's I said so. The ambitious sequel to Deliver Us the Moon takes 10 years since the Fortuna mission. There is a secret distress call coming in from Mars, and that's where the Zephyr crew will take off, finding out what is actually going on there. What is this? It's Why latest. wouldn't we? We're one of the few species with the power to pet things. Right? Deliver Us Mars centers around a team of astronauts that gets tasked to go to Mars to retrieve the technology that could revitalize the dying planet of Earth. Why'd we send it to Mars? Life on Earth is becoming extremely hard, not just for people, but also species are dying out. The atmosphere is becoming worse and worse. Like a terror. We need to find a way to make things better. So the story itself uh, is this grand sweeping and epic drama. We focus a lot on a family and especially a father and daughter relationship to tell this very personal story with this epic backdrop of trying to save the planet. I think we really managed to make this understandable and especially making a lot of hard choices throughout their journey. We wanted to tell a story that is mature in what it's telling the audience. We are not here to tell a story where good and evil is just very simple. It's very cool. difficult to discern what is right and what is wrong. And our characters are going to have a hard time figuring that one out. And I hope the players will do too. We've been in touch with all sorts of experts in order to ensure that it looks and feels like you're actually there. A real astronauts from uh, agencies like ESA and NASA that could shine a light on how it would feel to be an astronaut. Players can expect a host of new mechanics in the game. They can expect very diverse environments, the Martian dust storms, the blue sunsets, the craters that you can see around the landscape. We try to make it as lifelike as possible. It really goes into the deeper cinematic experience. That is just a step up from Live Us the Moon in every single way. The gameplay experience changed a bit, but we really wanted to stick to the core of what made Live Us the Moon Live Us the Moon. So something I'm really proud of and excited about is the new traversal system. It has got a new character controller and a climbing system, which makes it really cool to go over the surface. And also a new host of puzzle mechanics that actually expand okay. on an MPT network. And we really made that into a collective puzzle mechanic set. In order to know what it is really like cool to set be pieces. there, we've looked at all sorts of things. As most fans and people that like the first game and know the studio will know is that we didn't really hold back on developing this new title. And I, I dare to say our launch sequence has been researched very extensively. And I think it's going to be the coolest launch sequence we've seen to date in video games. If this does not make you feel like an astronaut, I, I don't know what will. VR. Maybe actually having to go to space, but that sucks. That takes a while to actually get. <laughs> but that sucks. I can tell you because we've done a lot of research into how you get to space and what it's like if you go into space. Let we me tell you what, it Mars sucks. In a very different manner. There is emotion. There is silence. It's also a very personal story. And that is taking the story and therefore the music to soaring heights where the stakes are larger than life, you need to save mankind, your humanity's last hope. Combining these two is one of the most inspiring things for any music or audio designer, I think.
my granddad made telescopes to have people view the moon. And I'm literally trying to get like young people, but people that love games to see Mars through video games. I wonder how much they have in terms of like... Um... I would like everyone to really look at the coming months because in the coming months there is going to be so much cool stuff we're going to announce and going to finally be able to talk about. We have been waiting so long and worked so long on this game already and I'm almost bursting out of my shell to uh, really put everything in front of you guys. I like passionate devs. I love when game studios get composers that are actually invested in and excited about their, their yeah, yeah. 100%. People that, people that aren't just doing a job, but are all also genuinely excited about their jobs. I like it too. I wonder how much of the data they have of like the geological surface of Mars, right? Like the topography, because they, they could just try to make Mars. I'm not sure how interesting that'd be from a gameplay perspective, though. This is the gameplay trailer. Sarah? Ryan? This is Kathy. Can you hear me? Please come in. Mission Opera has only one objective. Bring the Arcs and their revolutionary technology back home. Here we go, Opera Team. A journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. I need to know that when we get there, you'll make the right decisions. We can do this. What do you expect to find on Mars? I was hoping people, but it definitely looks like that isn't the case of what's happening. Okay, this is the story trailer. I kind of get the idea of the story already, but we'll watch it anyway. What the hell happened here? This is Kathy. Please come in. Mission Opera has only one objective. Bring the Arcs and their revolutionary technology back home. What do you expect to find on Mars? I'll see you soon, Mother. Kathy, why did you want to come on this mission so badly? T minus two minutes to cruise stage separation. Everybody copy? Copy. 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 Starting burn. We are in loss of control. I know I can do this. How does it come to this? <laughs> Having good intentions isn't hard, Kathy. The hard part is knowing the difference between what's right and what's wrong. We have to leave. I will not risk the success of this mission. How do you stay strong through all of that? How do you stay? Dad! Good. I think the game might be emotional, y'all. I think the game might be emotional. I think it might be. God. Never launch in T minus. The atmosphere continues to deteriorate at an alarming rate. Four. Assemble a team and bring those arcs back. Three. Oh, they really don't seem to want us to go. You saw the WSA using so many resources to send four people to space? You'd be angry too. Whoa. Two. Kathy, why did you want to come on this mission? Ah! No! I'll see you soon, Mother. seen anything like this it's incredible i need to know that when we get there you'll make the right decisions so what now neat i could imagine william defoe being the dad character 
I can imagine that uh, the the gameplay in this I don't actually expect to be in like anything super like game breaking. Uh, it, it's a puzzle exploration game. They showed a whole lot of their climbing mechanics, which really just looks like them trying to and i'm not saying that they're literally doing this but it definitely looks like if you took the climbing mechanics from tomb raider and put space paint all over it uh but i mean whatever if the if, if the gameplay is serviceable enough then it can do well especially if the story itself carries it along the price isn't too bad either it's got a base price of 30 dollars. it's actually on sale right now for 10 percent off even though it hasn't released yet how long is the first game um deliver us we'll just put deliver us that should give it to us deliver us the moon it's only a six hour long ish playthrough so really not super long at all um i imagine this one might be a little bit longer because it looks like they're really trying to push for something a little bit larger but how much is deliver us the moon now that's another question to have uh deliver us the moon the deliver us the mon Nope, that's the website. I want the Steam page. And the original game is $25. So price-wise, unless the price has been dropped at some point along the way since Deliver Us the Moon came out, they're also pricing it as though it is a larger game. It definitely feels larger anyway, but we I remember looking at Deliver Us the Moon, and it definitely didn't seem as grand as Deliver Us Mars is. This movie... This movie... <laughs> Can you tell what I'm about to say? This game also feels like a game that probably would have made a really, really good series or movie, but I understand that that's difficult as well, especially with the modern platforms and everything like that, like trying to figure out, like, can we even get funding from Netflix? And also movies are harder to achieve uh, a sense of visual deliverance that people are more willing to accept because, like, you know, the faces in this game, they look all right but they don't look incredible and the graphics in general look pretty damn good but they're not trying to make a uh, a live action replica photorealistic version of mars and so you can get away with more i think as a video game than you can as trying to make like a series or something like that if you tried to to deliver like even if you use the same visual aesthetic and stuff like that this visual uh, art direction and everything that it just wouldn't be able to be delivered on something that people might actually watch especially because the audiences are so vastly different between people that'll watch something on you know netflix or hulu or hbo max or whatever compared to uh, people that'll pick up a game and play through a story on steam but that said i did like it a lot uh, it makes me actually want to try Deliver Us the Moon. I feel as though they'll be quite different experiences with a decent amount of crossover. Like, some of the mechanics will be similar, but I think otherwise the ultimate experience between the two will probably be pretty significantly different. But that's Deliver Us Mars. Releases February 2nd. Looks pretty cool. I like what I see, and if I could figure out where in my time schedule I would put it, um, I would probably put it there, but... That's not where I'm at right now. But let me know what your thoughts are, especially if you've played Deliver Us the Moon. Let me know how you felt about that game, if you enjoyed it, what your experience with it was. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, if this is your first time seeing Deliver Us Mars or Deliver Us the Moon, how are you feeling about it? Does it look like something you want to pick up? Are you interested in it? Like I said, it does kind of, kind of look like an ex ed exploration adventure, like puzzle platformer style game that's not really putting a whole lot of depth into any of those genres and instead using those genres as a way to deliver the story that they want to send to you uh, but that's perfectly fine if you want to keep up the conversation elsewhere two great places to do so are discord and twitter speaking of discord we have a channel dedicated to these reactions where you can place links of your own that we can check out together live on stream because we do stream on twitch and i would love to see you there if you enjoyed this video please leave it a like if you want to catch future videos please subscribe to the channel and if you go watch one of the other videos on the channel or if i see you in the live stream thank you and enjoy All right, let's get that battle going. I started playing the first one using a cloud gaming services and it, the lag had me stop, but I'm willing to try. Yeah. 
Uh, I'll change shirt after after this one, Athena. Check out this hat. We got a donut on the top. Homer Simpson sleeping. We got fucking spider pig on the side. Although I think because it's like bootleg, it says the seven sins instead of the Simpsons. I got a Colossus Archer. Very nice. 200 gold. It can be used for 420 channel points. Most kills go into myself. Uh, followed by Athena. Most assists go into doing blind things. How are you for doing blind things? Uh, followed by everybody else. Going random in five. Thank you, Athena. Printy with the gold. Um, I can't place another. Well, I guess I could place another barbarian, but I don't want to. Not yet, anyway. I'm gonna go ahead and place the orc slayer now. Place your units, everybody. moment, Athena. All right. All right, everybody. If you want to put in your YouTube swans, your pog swans, your re swans, or whatever other emote fits your fancy. It can be for my channel or anyone else's. Oh, scratch the head. Check something else. Okay. Oh. There we go. All right. Greetings and salutations. My name is Michael Schwan, and today we're checking out. Perish. Now, I checked out Perish before, or at least I remember seeing trailers for it, and there just wasn't enough at the time. I think I saw it right when it was first like announced and revealed, and I was like, I need more than that. Well, we're getting more than that, because this game comes out on February 2nd in its full release date, uh, and I know that this is like an indie FPS shooter. Uh, it does have FPS shooter, lol, 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 first person shooter, shooter. And we, I know that it has an availability of online co-op. I don't know if that means it's going to be something along the lines of, like, Left 4 Dead slash Back 4 Blood. Or if it's going to be more along the lines of, like, Call of Duty Zombies slash, like, a Skur Ritual or something like that. But that's also what we're here to find out. Uh, so let's go ahead and just go back to the very beginning, the reveal trailer two years ago. It's probably why I don't remember very much of it. Uh, two years ago, revealed on June 11th of 2020, and we'll move our way forward from there. The valiant tasted death only once. Hello. Oh. Thank you. Oh. 
I wanted them to just shoot the, like, acolyte. I was sick. Even in the initial reveal, they showed off Toop. You can see they they had two perspectives. Judging by the arena style, at least of this initial reveal, this is going to be closer to Call of Duty Zombies. I don't see a wave enter indicator. Well, it says enter the church and activate the glowing priest, so it might have objectives. Look at the look at the detail on these guns. They really decided to just design their own weapons. It's not a bad thing at all. It's just like looking at like the uh, the um, filigree on them. What are you eating, little monster? I don't know. I'm eating gold soup. Leave me alone. Something's tickling me. Okay, so that was the reveal trailer. This is the announcement teaser from May 27th, 2021. The names of these trailers always are interesting depending on the release cycle or the uh, marketing cycle. There is no way back and only one way forward. Got like some back for blood vibes. The is cast. Perish. Uh, let's keep moving forward. So this is the gameplay showcase. Oh, I had these. Oh no, these are data right. This is from January 26th of 2021. Mind you, this is two years ago still. They really picked a visual style in our direction and just went all in on it. Athena, I think this is something we might need to play on Saturdays. If the price is right, anyway. Yeah, Scooby Squad, let's go. Find the chained abomination and kill it. Is it that? No, I don't think it's that. enemies care I don't feel like they care enough about a shotgun makes me a little bit concerned tasty and refreshing molten lava would go great with some snailios is you said that's the worst cereal is that an actual cereal please it mm. okay you could have fooled me purgatory to attempt your salvation oh your ascension very different thing was that a fully automatic shotgun yes and those enemies ate those bullets like they were freaking pop rocks dude
that spear better do an immense amount of damage if you're javeling it instead of using a shotgun. Just saying. I mean, it, it seems to explode on occasion, so that definitely would help. Whoa. Oh, that's fine. Zeus spicy stick. All right. Now we're going to jump forward almost two years, and we're going to jump to October 27th of 2022 for the official gameplay trailer. You don't belong here, Pariah. There is no way back, and only one way forward. I don't feel like that's gameplay. I feel like we've already seen this gameplay. That's new. I want to see the game. The music's good, but I don't need to see the dude playing it, okay? No, stop it. Go back. This is terrible. Whose idea was this? That's gameplay footage, I'm sure. I don't... I, you think? Excuse you? Oh, we're screwed. It's got a crab enemy. Cat Crabs are always broken in video games, man. And it makes babies. It's gonna be the, the hardest enemy in the game right there. That was cool looking. Still could have done without the random dudes playing guitar. All right, and then the release date trailer, which we already know. I believe I've already said, but it's fine. Hey, a bow. I like bows. Oh, damn. Yeah, I don't like that. You can stop fucking opening up the jaws of hell and releasing enemies. That'd be great. It's shiny. Pick an eye, babe. Pick, pick one. We got claws. Can we turn into monsters? That thing's crazy looking. Two, two, twenty-three. Looks way more polished now. Yeah, that's one of the the interesting things about looking at the trailers over the years is you can see how development was progressing, right? Because you're like, oh yeah, it doesn't look as uh like as choppy anymore. We're actually operating at like smooth frame rates and stuff. You can see where the like they've moved away from some like like things have more animations and stuff. You're like, yeah, we're making progress. Yeah. Ah. All right, so that's Parish. Uh, it does have a demo apparently available. It's going to be available on February 2nd. Um, no idea on a price at this point. I can't, I don't expect it to be too much just based on what it is, right? I do like that it has one to four player co op. I, I'm 100% down for that, but I feel like it's the type of the game that does better with co op which also means that it needs to be priced to where you could convince three of your friends to also buy it. Uh, I would like to see it at 20 bucks. Uh, I don't know if that's what it'll release at. I could see with some of the detail that they've put into some of the model work that maybe they'll push it farther than that. But for me to just want to immediately pick it up and play with my, with my friends on, on Saturdays and stuff like that, uh, it would need to be probably around the $20 point. But I like a lot of what it is. It's not doing anything new, but that's not a bad thing. You can do things that have already been done before. Before, Like, this is just Call of Duty Zombies, Killing Floor, Skirt Ritual, whatever, right? And that's perfectly okay. Uh, maybe a little bit of Back for Blood sprinkled in there. And there's nothing wrong with that. Those games are fun if you like that style of gameplay, if the gameplay loop is appealing to you. Sometimes just getting a new coat of paint and new toys to play with in the form of different weapons is enough that you're willing to um, just, you know 
have have the same good time that you had with games before it. But that's Parish. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are. I wish games did deals where you buy one and can get gift discounts on multiplayer games. That'd be a good idea. Sometimes they have them. Sometimes they have like four player packs on Steam. I have seen that before. Uh, I think it was like Terraria uh, had that. Uh, it was built into Steam that you could buy, buy like a four player pack and you got a discount. It's like buy three, get one free or something like that is what the price ultimately equated out to, which is, you know, good enough. It's still something. But anyway, so let me know what your thoughts are on Parish. If you've played the demo, I would also really love to hear from you. It just, you know, is, did you have a good time? Did it work well? How did it feel? If you want to keep up the conversation elsewhere, two great places to do so are Discord and Twitter. Speaking of Discord, we have a channel dedicated to these reactions where you can place links of your own that we can check out together live on stream because we do stream on Twitch, and I would love to see you there. If you enjoyed this video, please leave it a like. If you want to catch future videos, please subscribe to the channel. If you go to one of the other videos on the channel, or if I see you in the live stream, thank you and enjoy. All right, now we need to change shirts. I'll be right back. For fuck's sake, I just read that. I'm like, is there a Discord command? Discord, there is. Thanks. Like, 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 like it, it, I definitely felt like you were thanking yourself. Just like, thanks, me. You found the Discord command. I'm so, I did such a good job. Oh, God. Eyeball. Stop it. Ah! Now we go over here. And I assure you, chat, I can still see you. This is going to be the long form video. Uh, I will be taking breaks in between sections and pieces, uh, but it'll be a little bit more disconnected. Huh. Thanks for everything set up. I don't and I should because it's impossible to find stream info on iPads. <laughs> yeah, I try to have all my commands set up as much as I can. All right, get started, all right? I'll be taking lots of breaks in this, just pauses. I'll respond to anything in chat during those pauses. I'm not going to change hats during this. Um, we're going to start it up and roll on through. Greetings. Oh, God, nope, that, hang on. Got this. Take a moment to make sure my eyeball doesn't try and claw its way out of my face. Like, it's not the oil issue that I get occasionally. It's like something actually, like, almost went into my eye, and my eye freaked out about it. All right. Greetings and salutations. My name is Michael Schwann, and today we're going to talk about my most anticipated games of 2023. There's a lot of games releasing this year. There's a lot. There's so many games coming out, a lot of which still don't have release dates, some of which have already come out, and man... This, this year is going to be crazy uh, to anyone and everyone, including myself, that at the end of the year does like best of 2023 videos. I just got done with a series of those for 2022, the good, the bad, the ugly, the memorable, and the forgettable. This year, if I get to touch a lot of these games, it's going to be 
hard. It's going to be hard. 2022 was hard. 2023 is going to be worse. All right. So I actually have 20 games lined up for us to talk about, but I have them broken into sections. Okay. So we're going to talk about a couple of games that have already released. We're going to talk about my top 10 games that I'm looking forward to in 2023. And then I got some extra games in there. I got a couple of games tacked on that. Uh, we don't know if they're going to be released in 2023. They could or should but we're also in the age of delay so who knows and then i just got a couple of bonus games to throw on there as well so let's get started eyeball be nice to me all right first let's talk about the games that have already come out and there's only two that are on this list right now uh and the first one is fire emblem engage it released on january 20th i i, I was after i really got into fire emblem for the first time with fire emblem three houses and so when we finally got to the next major fire emblem release i actually then one after that was fire emblem heroes three hopes played that loved it and then we got fire emblem engage i already own it i already got it i just haven't managed to start playing it yet but it's definitely on my list and I'm very I'm very excited about that even right now even though it's already come out I just haven't actually had the opportunity to put it in my switch and play it the other game that has already released that I was very excited about the release in 2023 was the latest game from Square Enix called Forspoken I I will say that I am very disappointed with the online community and how they have treated Forspoken when there are so many other games that have done so many things so much worse than Forspoken has. And for some reason, Forspoken just got to be chosen as the punching bag when it does not deserve it. Uh, I did play Forspoken the day it released. I have already gotten all the way through the story. I've completed the story. I've not completed the game. We're going to keep playing some more of the game because it's an open world exploration style game. And I'm really enjoying that aspect of it. But I didn't want to get too distracted from the story because in those open world games, you can really ruin the pacing of the story if you get too distracted from it. So we just kind of streamlined through the story, and now we'll go back and explore and all that kind of fun stuff, right? Uh, Forspoken came out. I was really excited about it from the very moment that I saw it, and it delivered in every way that I hoped that it would. I enjoyed it immensely, and I highly recommend it. Uh, so those are the two games that have already released, though. Let's get into the things that we are still waiting to see. Most anticipated. A ton. All of them. Not true, actually. I just made a video of the games of 2023 that I'm not excited for. All right. So coming in at number 10 is Armored Core 6 Fires of Rubicon, the latest game coming out from From Software, the creators of Dark Souls, Elden Ring, Bloodborne, Sekiro, and so on, right? They are also the people that originally made Armored Core, and they just kind of left it in the dust as they made Soulsian after Soulsian after Soulsian, got their, their accolades and their paychecks, and then they're like, by the way, Armored Core, we have the rights to that, it's R.I.P., we made it, what if we made a new one? And to people that were Armored Core fans went, okay, what are you doing? Because... To people that have played Armored Core in the past, Armored Core has a, a, a storied history. And Armored Core, I just want to know what kind of Armored Core they're making, okay? Because across the years of Armored Core, we'll just say one through five, the game has played very differently. And I don't mean differently in the way that Dark Souls games have played, okay? I don't mean the you got the jank of Dark Souls versus the speed and cleanliness of Sekiro versus the visceralness of Bloodborne. They're all the same game with different flavors, right? The different Armored Core games, they feel so significantly different to one another. And so it's like, I think of like Armored Core 4 as one of the ones that I really loved a lot. They were fast and engaging with tons of customization to your Armored Core that you could build. And just, you had a lot of ability to express yourself and how you built your mech. And the game was fast. But then there was other Armored Core entries that weren't as fast, that... They were close. They weren't. They weren't Mech Warrior, but they felt closer to Mech Warrior than they felt to what I 
thought of when it came to Armored Core. I don't know what we'll get out of Armored Core 6. It says it's releasing in 2023, it, which is amazing to me since From Software just released Elden Ring in early 2022. But that, I guess, you know, they, we, we know that they've had multiple dev teams for a while. So Armored Core 6 could have been in development for a while. But I am very excited for this game. I do hope it releases this year. And I am very curious about what it's going to be. Armored Core! Don't fuck it up. Number nine is Stalker 2 Heart of Chernobyl. Now, I I hope this game releases in 2023, and my heart goes out to the developers of Stalker. Uh, if you are unaware, the developers of Stalker are all originally based out of Kiev in Ukraine, and the conflict between Russia and Ukraine uh, definitely affected them to the point that their entire studio had to relocate, and it was not a small portion of their development team uh, decided to drop the, the mouse and keyboard and pick up an actual weapon to go defend their home. And I can also say that we know for a fact that they have told us that not all of them have made it, uh, including some very significant members like leads of their development team uh, have lost their lives in the defense of their homeland. And there was the question of, hey, will Stalker 2 survive as a game? Is Stalker going to still get made? And they did confirm very recently, they're like, yes, we kept up development this entire time. We had people working out of their bathtubs at their aunt's house where they were taking shelter and stuff uh, because they wanted to finish the game. And also, you know, it, on the idea that the conflict does resolve, they're going to need money to, like, live, right? So they pushed forward with development, and they did announce a 2023 release window. Uh, I don't know if it will achieve that. I don't think anyone would blame them in the slightest if it doesn't. Uh, but I'm I, I'm very excited about Stalker. I never played the original Stalker game, but I have played a ton of Escape from Tarkov. And one of the things that I love about Escape from Tarkov so much is the kind of like really nitty gritty hardcore survival elements into it. And I'm not talking about the way that like Daisy or the Forest has. It's it, it, it's different where you're trying to just find things and stuff and it feels really good and people have told me they're like if you like Tarkov you should go play Stalker but I've also then had people tell me they're like the original Stalker has not aged well I do not recommend and I was like all right how about I just wait for the second one uh, and so it does look like the second one is going to be here relatively soon I hope that the development is going well I wish the best to the developers and uh, I hope that you're able to deliver in 2023 not Completely understand, but I'm looking forward to your game. <sighs> that was a hard one to get through without like being emotional. Good God. Good God. Didn't I didn't want to get emotional, but I definitely could have. Because goddamn. Fuck war. I believe you. Thanks for fuck's sake. I appreciate that. Number eight is Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League or Murder the Justice League or whatever it is, okay? Now, I completely understand and I sympathize with everyone who looks at this game with the, like, just a bowl dripping full of skepticism, okay? This game is set to release on the 26th of May of 2023, and we've seen almost zero gameplay, but there were some leaked screenshots of like some really Marvel's Avengers looking menus. And there was some stuff about like a cash shop and a battle pass. And like, I understand games as a service can be shit, right? I get it. Okay. But also when it comes to like Marvel's Avengers, there was a good game in there. The single player playthrough of Marvel's Avengers when you're not worried about grinding out the end game abilities or trying to get through the unlock trees or being berated with battle pass and daily missions and microtransactions. There was a good game in there that greed ruined, right? And I'm hoping that Suicide Squad will take lessons from these games of the service that have failed and do better because... There's just it it just feels like it's going to be a cool game and I want it to be a cool game and I'm hoping that they look at things like Gotham Knights that they look at Marvel's Avengers that they look at shit like Babylon's Fall and all these other games as a service that have just like really poo-pooed on customers and they go what if we made good games 
that were a games as a service that didn't suck. <laughs> like, right? Like, can that be a thing? Because even like we've only gotten a lot of cinematics, and I the cinematics are of course meant to be cinematic. So you're like, that was fun and cool. There's funny characters, and they're fighting evil Flash and Superman. Um, but you know, it I, I want it to also be just a fun, entertaining game. And I, I do have a level of excitement for this. I'll also say that I'm a little bit biased in this. You know that trash-ass Suicide Squad movie that came out in, like, 2015 or 2016 or whatever? I, I will not pretend like that movie should have won awards, but I will tell you with my full chest that I enjoy that movie. I liked it, and I have watched it more than once. And I'm not somebody who watches movies in general, like, period. And maybe that's why I liked it, because I just don't have a whole lot of experience in movies. But I liked Suicide Squad. And the fact that we're getting a Suicide Squad game, I'm on board for it. Snap seems to be doing well in comparison. Snap is a card game. Um, and Snap is also made by Ben Brode, the person that made Hearthstone. So it has a couple of, of advantages to it. Snap also doesn't have a... Uh, a, a, a great track record either, though, because Marvel Snap, when they first, th this release of it that everyone is playing and talking about, it's technically a re-release. Marvel Snap actually originally released a little while before that, and they had so much pushback and so much negative feedback for their monetization that they had to take the game down and redo it. So... While, yes, Marvel Snap is doing well, it, it, it isn't just because they did it right the first time. But it is doing well now, and hopefully it sets an example for other people in the future. Oh, we can run the battle. Let's go, Killer Croc. Let's go murder. That song. That song has restored my strength. Speaking of movies, Pokemon the Movie 3000, Lugia. The song. The song has restored my strength. We got three Berserkers and two Bombers, either which could be yours for 420 channel points. Most kills going to myself and most assists. Mm. Sorry. Halbert's Mules picking up uh, second most kills, and we have Halbert's Mules and Pretty Hero do the second most assists. Thank you so much. <laughs> Going random in three, two, one. By the way, what's up? Athena and 24 hard with the rewards. I've seen some hi fi rush gameplay and keep wondering if the voice actor is the same who did Tetis and Final Fantasy X. I. I think it is actually uh, Tidus voice actor. Uh, no, maybe not. I think I don't. I don't think it's actually him. Um, behind the voice actor, Tidus voice James Arnold Taylor. Uh, let's. He's not actually done anything in 2023 yet. Uh, Hi-Fi Rush. Cast. Shy, voiced by Robbie Damon. Uh, who else did he voice that we might know? Uh, he versed Hubert from Fire Emblem. I know that one. Did I start this battle? I did. Hang on. Oh, she's in here, Athena. The healer skin is in the quests. She's the last quest reward. She 
She's right there at the very end. Gotta hurry up and get through the rest of the quests. I got a week. Brother, what are the rest of the quests? Let's see, we got set battle plans in seven battles. Three berserkers, eight battles. Damn. Win nine battles. Place four shinobi. Eight battles. Fuck, I don't know if I can get there. That's so much. Meat time? I don't know if I have enough meat either. I only have 41 meat. Can I buy meat in the store right now? I can buy meat in the store right now. All right, maybe it's meat time. I'll worry about... We'll see how far we can get. All right, anyway. Who else has uh, this guy voiced? Got to go to the meat dimension. He's Veneer in Konosuba. All right. Oh, he's Zhao in Like a Dragon. That's a noteworthy one. Oh, he's also a catchy. Goro Akechi in uh, Persona 5, which we've been playing. Hubert again. Ah, oh, he's Tuxedo Mask in the newer Taylor, uh, Taylor Moon, Sailor, Sailor Moon series. He's everybody in Spider-Man. Okay, not literally, but good God. back over here and pause it all right do you have any current jobs yeah spider-man oh who do you voice on spider-man everyone shrugs <laughs> oh cool who do you do <laughs> yes <laughs> all right Number seven is Flintlock, the Siege of Dawn. Now, Flintlock, I feel like, is just not on enough people's radars when I feel like it really, really should be. This game looks cool as hell, all right? I think this game looks awesome. Uh, it's currently got a release window of early 2023. No set release date yet, at least at the time of this recording. I'm super excited about this game. I think this game looks really cool. It's got this really neat, like, Flintlock fantasy, Soulsian, God Slayer, like, Old Westman. Like, it's got so many cool things of going on with it really nice visuals the gameplay looks really really sick i'm i'm ready to play this game i don't know I, whenever they release the release date for it i'm gonna just go immediately to my calendar and be like move bitch because that's what we're playing we're playing that <laughs> and on second thought as i'm like talking about this this should have been way higher up the list i'm apparently like talking about it, i'm like man i'm excited as hell for this game and I can tell you that even the game after this, I'm I'm definitely more excited for Flintlock. Whatever. It's fine. The list is transformative, and it evolves as we go. So, let's continue on to the next one. You know MJ? Oh, yeah, yeah. Not her. Oh. And I also don't voice... um. Uh... Shit, what's the name of the fucking reporter guy? J. Jonah Jameson? Is that his name? Jameson? I don't voice him either. Because he's voiced by the dude who's voiced him forever. Because th they have the dude that played him in the live action also voicing him any time he shows up. Because why wouldn't you? I forget what his name is. Number six is After Us. Now, this is probably the newest entry on the list because it was just shown off for the very first time at the Game Awards. And I was just enthralled and entranced by this game when it came onto the screen. 
I thought it was lovely. I thought it was beautiful. It looked like such a engrossing journey and a really just beautiful game. Think of games like Journey and Abzu and these games that are just going to be these just really memorable, beautiful experiences. It'll probably have gameplay elements in there, but that's not going to be the reason that you play it. And it's not going to be the reason that you remember it. I think this game is just really, really enchanting and i'm really excited to play it and it's supposed to release sometime in early 2023 hopefully that means soon um, but i I'm, I'm ready for it and i would like it now but i will happily wait until they're ready to give it to us All right, here it is. Project Eve, also now known as Stellar Blade. I'm sure you've seen the main character's butt plastered onto enough YouTube videos, thumbnails, people's freaking Twitter profiles. And while the booty is good, that's not the reason that we're, that we're excited about it, okay? I mean, I'm sure some people are then like, yes, <laughs> booty. It's, I, I, the, the real reason that I'm excited is because this just looks like maybe what Bayonetta 3 should have been. Now, don't get me wrong. I loved Bayonetta 3 a lot, but that game was definitely being strangled by being a Nintendo Switch exclusive. Stellar Blade is this really cool character action game. It just looks awesome. This A new modern spectacle fighter exclusive to the PlayStation 5 that looks like it was designed to be exclusive on next-gen hardware where we're just getting these really, really impressive visuals, very flashy, engaging, high-octane high combat, uh, and um, it's going to be a really sick game, and I'm sure it's going to make it onto a lot of people's lists. It's going to be really cool, and I'm ready for it. Uh, it's going to be so... And I believe they said that it's going to be sometime in the middle of 2023, but officially it doesn't have that date. It doesn't have any date beyond just the year, but we should see it this year, and it's just it's probably going to be one of those just big games that everyone plays, everyone talks about. It's been talked about already on end, whether it's because of the visuals, the gameplay, or the booty, and we'll just keep talking about it for those same reasons. All right, speaking of Bayonetta, number four is Bayonetta Origins, Cereza and the Lost Demon. Speaking of surprises at the Game Awards, okay? One, there was a question after Bayonetta 3 released of like, does Bayonetta as a game, as a franchise, get to continue? And th the lead developer, Hideki Kamiya, was like, oh, yeah, yeah, 100%. We're making more Bayonetta. We're working on it right now. And we're like, really? All right, cool. And then he was like, oh, yeah, by the way, we're also making this cute little side game called Bayonetta Origins that's very like Alice in Wonder Wonderland-esque where you're seeing a cute little young Cereza go through like a storybook sequence like it's freaking Mother Goose, except, you know, it's Bayonetta and demons so you know you got like cheshire the cat and he's like this big horrible monster but he's also a cute fluffy friend anyway and they're like oh yeah by the way so that game exists and we're like wow all right cool that's awesome it releases the 17th of march 2023 and we're like wait a minute you just released bayonetta 3 like a month ago and they're like yeah we know we got another one coming out in three months are you ready and i'm like yeah I, I guess i am i guess i'm totally ready i'll absolutely play this this game also looks like it won't suffer the same fate that bayonetta 3 did it's more of a kind of like character platforming puzzle game it's a cute little adventure game which means that the switch hardware will do just fine with it uh so yeah i'm on board let's go Number three is Witchfire, and we're continuing on with the games that don't actually have a set release date beyond early 2023. Can I please have some dates for some of these games, please? So, Witchfire, it looks cool. It's this roguelike, like, semi-open world, open zone, I think is what they're calling it. A FPS game where you got guns and magic and you're going through these, like, like high fantasy medieval style cities. And it just looks really cool. It looks like a blast. I want to play it. Um, it's supposed to, it's only going to be an early access though. It's going to be early access through the Epic Game Store, which sucks in a lot of ways, but alas, it is what it is. Here we are. This game looks sick. It's beautiful. It looks like it's going to be a lot of fun and I am ready to play it.
Number two is Wanted Dead, releasing on Valentine's Day, the 14th of February, 2023. Now, Wanted Dead is a game that I have a storied history with at this point, uh, because we've done, I think, like three or four reaction videos to it. And the game, thankfully, just keeps looking better, because when we first took a look at it, I was like, oh, you should not know. This looks so bad. It's a blurry mess. It's low FPS. I can't tell what's happening. And just as it's continued its journey of development, we I've gotten to see this game just look better and better and better. And now it just looks awesome. I'm super excited about it. It looks really fun. It's developed by X Ninja Gaiden devs. So that'll give you an idea of what you might be getting yourself into. Uh, I have been told that the game is not a, not a joke. It is not for the weak of heart, which means that we might get a little uh, challenging up in here, but that's perfectly fine. Uh, and I, it even went farther. I actually entered into a contest with the that the developers put out. I got to win one of five posters that exist that were signed by the creative director as well as the lead actress that is portraying the main character of the game. So I'm invested in more ways than one at this point. I'm really ready to play this, and thankfully, it is coming very, very soon. My most excited for game, anticipated game for 2023... If you have heard me rant at all about anything, is Final Fantasy 16, okay? Like, I'm such a tool when it comes to this franchise. If it's got the word Final Fantasy on it, there's a very, very good chance that I've already bought it. And guess what? I've already bought it. I already reserved and paid for my freaking Final Fantasy 16 Collector's Edition that Square Enix gouged me out of my freaking wallet and down to my foot for for them to mail it to me because I live in Alaska. So mailing anything here is already expensive than Square Enix tax cash. Came in and was like, yes, but what if we judged you more? And I'm like, that sucks a lot. But you know what? I don't care because Final Fantasy has been such a major part of my life for all of my life. It is the franchise that I definitely am just the most beloved fan of. I still am very critical of them. Square Enix as a company has done a lot of things wrong. And even with the Final Fantasy franchise, they have struggled to do a lot of things with it and they still struggle in a lot of ways but Final Fantasy 16 looks really good it's being headed up by Yoshi P the lead director from Final Fantasy 14 the the most beloved and highly rated MMO that you can play 30 days no you can play for free up to level 60 or 70 including the first expansion of Heaven's Ward or something you can play a lot of it for free and there's a lot of content that you could play completely for free on Final Fantasy 14 but that's not what we're here for we're talking about Final Fantasy 16 uh, it looks really good. Uh, I'm glad that they're not trying to go hyper photorealistic the, the way that they did with Final Fantasy 15. I think that hyper photorealism in games is holding games development back, and instead you just need to choose a good art direction. And I feel like that's what they've done with Final Fantasy 16. They've picked a good looking art direction that isn't trying to make people look like real people but that is still appealing to the eye and just going with it and going to town. And so as far as we've heard from Yoshi P, Final Fantasy 16 has had a really good development, not many issues that have been rolling along very smoothly, which t that feels like that tells me that it's going to be a smooth release and a just a damn good game when it comes out. And I am so ready to play the next entry in my favorite franchise. This isn't Final Fantasy 14. No. All right, so I got three games that I have in a category of 2023 question mark because I don't actually know if they'll release this year, okay? Uh, the first of which is Pragmata. We actually know almost nothing about this game beyond it's got like some sort of space aesthetic to it. I don't even remember that much about this game because outside of there's some cool girl and like a big astronaut robot man and like the city starts to like, like evaporate into pieces. I'm trying to remember it, but this footage that you see right now, I don't actually get to see. I added it in post and so I'm trying to remember from when it was first shown off at like E3 2020 or whatever it is it looks really cool and I'm really hoping to find out more and learn more about it they said it should be releasing this year maybe but that's a big freaking maybe so we'll find out but either way I'm excited about Pragmata uh, but it definitely goes in that maybe bin 
uh, the next game, uh, I, re I, was, I almost paused like I was going to roll through these. No, we're going to roll through these, uh, which is Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Uh, we just talked about how much I love Final Fantasy. Duh, I'm excited about Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, the next entry in the Final Fantasy Remake Trilogy. But this has a set release window of Winter 2023, which Winter 2023 starts on December 22nd of 2023 and extends all the way out till March of 2024, which means that it's probably actually releasing in 2024. Still excited about it. Still, like, interested in it. I'm absolutely playing it and buying the collector's edition and all that stuff and everything. But I don't expect this game in 2023 in the slightest. Winter 2023 tells me that it's probably going to be early 2024. And Square Enix has a really bad habit with delaying their game. So it's probably going to be more like summer 2024. And that's okay. But it means that it doesn't get to make it onto the top 10 list. The last game, which doesn't actually have a release window at all, is Routine. And, you know, I don't I, I don't play scary games. I don't. I don't play horror games. They're not my jam. And but that doesn't mean that I can't appreciate them and don't and don't like look at them and go, I would I think I would like to play that. I probably wouldn't like to play that, but you know, I I think I would like to play that. And so Routine is one of those games that fits into that category. This game looks intense, looks creepy, looks spooky. You're running from crazy zombie robots that want to eat you, and that's horrifying. But it looks sick. The aura, the tone, the energy, the atmosphere, they've gotten so good in the trailers that I've gotten to see. And hopefully we get to see something about this, more about this game soon. They, it, There's been rumors of a 2023 release date, but the actual developers and publishers have not given any set window. Now, real quick, just a few rapid fire games. Uh, these are games that I don't really need to talk about, but they're games that I'm like, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. They're games that I want to play, but they're not hyper priorities for me. Uh, that is Star Wars Jedi Survivor, the sequel to Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. I like that game a lot. Getting more of it is uh, something I'm looking forward to. Resident Evil 4 Remake. Resident Evil 4 was one of my favorite games like ever, I think it is, for a lot of people that have played it. Uh, I think it might have actually been the first Resident Evil game that I played because I just didn't get into the franchise much at all. And I enjoyed the ever-loving hell out of that game, so looking forward to that. It's going to be a good time. Planet of Lana is a game that's supposed to release this year, and I'm looking forward to that quite a bit. Uh, I've seen a lot of the marketing for it. It looks like a really enjoyable time, a fun adventure, and a really, really unique world. And I, that that's just I, I like seeing people's creativity in a way that isn't uh, being limited by anything. And Planet of Lana looks to be that type of really creative experience. Pikmin 4 is supposed to release this year. I freaking love Pikmin. I love Pikmin a lot, okay? But outside of the, like, 10-second trailer that Nintendo gave us that said that Pikmin was releasing in 2023, we don't actually, we've not seen anything else for this game at all whatsoever. So while I'm excited, I'm like, yay, Pikmin! All right, well, let me know when you feel like telling us more, Nintendo, because you're not telling us more right now. And then last is Lies of P. I've actually been avoiding marketing for Lies of P. I like Soulsian games a lot, and Lies of P looks like it's just going to be the next major Soulsian game since Elden Ring. Like, if you want a game that is going to be something that people talk about and people care about within that genre and that space, it's going to be Lies of P. This game looks sick, and it's going to be just this really definitive hallmark of a game. And if it doesn't live up to those expectations, that's very unfortunate because I know a lot of people that have those expectations for it. So to slap those five extra games on there, they're not quite up there in the same way that the initial top ten that I talked about is, but I'm excited about them all the same. Hi, Napalm. What do you, uh, what do you got there? You got some workouts? Why would you do that? Fallen Order was fun. Welcome in, Napalm, by the way. It's good to see you, Fred. Uh, looking forward to RE4 Remake. I wasn't able to play the original and it hasn't aged. Well, yeah. It'll just be a, it'll just be the good way to play Resident Evil. We played Resident Evil 2 Remake, and that was pretty good. I enjoyed it. You gotta do exercise. Do it. I will in a minute. I will when we get to the next actual Stream Raiders battle, okay? I will do it, though. All right, so those are the games that I am most excited for in 2023. Ugh, definitely a lot of games. And there's, I will tell you that this isn't even all of them, okay? This is the short list. The short list that's 20 games long. 
because there's more games that are coming out this year that I also am excited for that also look great, but I had to stop somewhere. I tried to make it a top 10, and then I was like, hmm, but I really want to talk about this game. I don't want to talk about this game and this game and this game. And then what about these games that already came out? And that's that's how we got here, okay? So uh, thanks for hanging out while I just rambled about games that I'm excited about, which let me know what games you're excited about. I actually had a video that I just put out, I think a couple of weeks ago, of games that are coming out this year that I'm not excited about that are really big games. Games such as like The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. I'm not excited about that game. Street Fighter VI. I'm not excited about that game. If you want to know the reasons why, go check out that video. Uh, but what, regardless, let me know why you're excited about vi what video games you're excited about in 2023. I'd love to hear from you. Leave your thoughts down in the comments below. If you want to keep up the conversation elsewhere, uh, Two great places to do so are Discord and Twitter. Speaking of Discord, we got channels dedicated to things like this where we can just keep talking if you're interested in doing so. Otherwise, if you want to come talk to us live on stream, we do stream on Twitch. I would love to see you there. If you enjoyed this video, please leave it a like. If you want to catch future videos, please subscribe to the channel. If you watch one of the other videos on the channel or if I see you in the live stream, thank you and enjoy. Napalm! Welcome in, Raiders. <laughs> Hello. Hello there. Hi. Welcome in, Raiders. Napalm, what were you up to? Shout out at Napalm Trees. Playing Faith? Were you doing one of your, like, grab bag nights where you just kind of play random stuff? You grab some, uh, I'll, re I'll, re I'll uh, refund you the hat swap, Napalm, because I got to change hats for the next video anyway. Haircut, bigger hat, littler head, you look different tonight. Also, hi. Hi, Faceless. Uh, I got a haircut like three weeks ago. I think. Kinda. I did tier list for like two hours. You should edit those and put those on YouTube, you know? He's become a hardcore strict Christian streamer. All faith-based games. Ah. Yes. Napalm, the hardcore Christian streamer. How much time do we have on that battle? Six minutes? Okay. Hang on. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. If Jesus ain't in it, I ain't playing it. I need my Jesus. I need my Jesus in my games. Let him show me the truth as only ones and zeros can. Can I get an amen? Can I get a hallelujah for Jesus Christ in video games? <laughs> Jesus is a friend. Jesus is a friend of mine. I knew him. I know him and he is here with us now. Napalm, a firm believer in institutions. Yes, absolutely. A firm believer in institutions. Jesus is everywhere. Does that mean you're going to play everything? Uh, how much is everything right now? Hang on. Everything. Uh, you can play everything for $15 right now. If you would so like to do so. I mean, I do know what Jesus, but it's Jesus. As a former Sunday school teacher, I'm ready to bring the Jesus to the people. Show me Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Tom Cruise. Use your magic. How was your stream, though, Napalm? Was it good? Did you have a good time? How were the tier lists? What tier list did you make? And how aggressively would I disagree with them? I did NFL teams based on how their logo looks. That's a fun one. I was still a fan of the cheese tier lists. I was... <laughs> See, I, I, I'm always cautious when I'm a viewer, when people are doing tier lists, because I am an opinionated individual. And I I'm always just like, hmm, 
Would it be too much for me to uh, be assertive with these? Streamer has opinions? No, never. He would never. Water, top of the list. Yeah. Water, water gets its own tier. Like if it's S tier, like if you, if it's S, if if it's S through F, you got to put water on S plus. It depends on the water. That's fair, Athena. But in a general sense, just a general sense, we're not talking about you know sulfur water from the from the tap in Georgia. We're not talking about you know the the brown water in Flint, Michigan. We're just talking about you know just like water as a concept. Napalm said the Seahawks logo looks like a butt plug, so we can't be friends now because it definitely looks like a different sex. Damn it, Seahawks. That does not look like a butt plug. Definitely does not. I disagree. You could call it a sex toy. Yes. Butt plug, no. Oh, I mean bottled waters can taste vastly different. Yeah, sure, 100%. I did an anime tier list in the categories where seen it and can name it, seen it and can't name it, can name it and haven't seen it and cannot name it and haven't seen it. Oh man. I don't know how I would do on that list. <laughs> I'm terrible with names. I was shitting on a lot of logos like the bears. Their logo was a fucking C. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, seriously, Napalm. In all of your spare time, just edit that down and slap that shit on YouTube. My chat got really mad at me because I couldn't name a lot of the ones that I was apparently supposed to know. Like what? Which one do you feel they got the most upset at? Disappointed every time you could name one, my failson. What? Okay, we're gonna start this battle and I'll do the workouts for Napalm. There you go. Whew. I thought Tenji Muyo was in Yasha. And I couldn't pick any Yasha out of a crown. There are worse ones than that. But that's pretty bad. I will agree that not being able to point out Inuyasha is pretty bad. 
Are we just fighting this fucking soccer ball? What are we doing? Fucking Rem is pissed. I mean, we're gonna win in two minutes by default, but what is happening in this battle? Are you a bad guy? No! What enemy is left? I only see two soccer balls. It says three enemies, but I, I only see the two soccer balls. I don't know. Is this the Super Bowl that I keep hearing about? <laughs> We're not strong enough to kill the Super Bowl. Wait, he's right here. This is why somebody go get him. <laughs> this little shadow healers just hiding right here. Like, um, if I hold really still, Maybe they won't notice me and they'll just keep beating up the soccer ball. Pardon me while I kiss this ground. It's alright, we'll win in 45 seconds. Because we outnumber the shadow healer and the soccer balls. Hey, we win. <laughs> One paladin going to Prenny. Most kills to myself and Dot Jogurt. Most assists going to Athena, followed by Prenny Hero and Dot Jogurt. All right. We did it. Now it's time to face the Balrog. All right. Uh, all the enemies are on the far side over there. The ball rog. Uh, and this will be last. We do still have three reactions to do, but I'm hoping to... Wow, what the fuck are these letters? Help yourself. There we go. I'm hoping to get through two of them before we run the battle, and then we'll do the last one, and then we'll bounce on out of here. Or, or, I might just do two and actually commit to um, editing that Square Enix tax rant. We'll see how it goes, we'll see how it goes. All right, all right, uh, back to this screen. We like commitment. I'm good at commitment. I am. Okay, I'm gonna go poop and sleep. Have a good night, Napalm. Thank you so much for the raid. I appreciate it, friend. Alrighty then. Alright, everybody, put in your YouTube swans, your pog swans, your re swans, or whatever other swan fits your fancy. If you're a subscriber, you have access to it. If not, you will need BTTV, and you can put in just YouTube swan if you have BTTV. Um, but otherwise, you can use any other uh, emote that you want. It can be, doesn't even have to be from my channel, it can be from any other channel.
It can even be from Napalm's channel. Alrighty then. Let's go. Nope. Yep. Greetings and salutations. My name is Michael Schwann, and today we are checking out mm, Inkalinati. Like Illuminati, but Inkalinati. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Doing my best. Maybe they'll say it in one of these trailers. This game looks really cute. This game looks like the, the I was from the screenshots that I've seen. If you've seen like the the artwork of medieval style books where it's like the soldiers on the side and they're all painted in the, the colors and stuff like that. Uh, it's like that kind of colored artwork and it's a turn based uh, strategy RPG. Uh, which kind of makes me think of maybe like a Darkest Dungeon style or like maybe even straight up like dodgeball style Final Fantasy RPGs. We'll see though. That's what we're here to find out. Uh, so we'll just start all the way back at the beginning of the initial announcement for this game that was in August of 2018. And we'll work our way forward. So let's go. <laughs> Oh. Oh. Okay. Uh, all right. This is the pre-alpha gameplay trailer. All right, so we have a knight versus somebody else and they're drawing their units. Okay, that was cute. Got kind of like a randomized amount of damage. And there was much rejoicing. Well, you know, you just mentioned it's very Monty Python-esque, but if you look right here, Ruthless Rabbit called Mongrel killed a dog, and there was much rejoicing. So, very Monty Python. <laughs> and a story was written. Casimir pattered around casually nearing the destination. Casimir simply struck encountered fool and everyone knew he made a bad call. Deadhead, who wedded a sheep once, jabbed foe, and he felt empty. Mongrel wandered with confidence towards fuzzy thoughts. Sexy Mongrel socked old friend, and his soul trembled. <laughs> okay, okay. Seems like a game I would take a look at, but not much like playing. Well, this is still from four years ago. This is still from, well, the December 6th of 2018. We got a little ways to go in terms of what else this game might have to show us. So we'll see what's going on. Uh, there's some unit reveals. Uh, th they're super short, though. Oh. Okay. Uh -huh. Fear the snail. Got it. Okay, so this is the Kickstarter announcement trailer. Uh, so this was in May of 2020. So they still had quite a ways to go. Uh, we'll take a look at the Kickstarter in just a moment. The emergence of medieval books, a testimony to how we misunderstood the Middle Ages. Pourquoi les escargots combattent les chevaliers? Why do rabbits have swords and fight against dogs? The thing is, these illuminations are not decorations. Ce sont des vestiges d'un ancien rituel, un rituel que nous ne connaissons pas, mais qui existait à l'époque. The ritual of the Inculinati. Okay, there's also a Kickstarter video, so we'll watch this as well. I can see someone streaming this and everyone needing popcorn. Wow, good hit. Oh. 
touched up the ink around him a little bit. Oh. Oh. There's like a tentacle hold. Yeah, there's, there's like, oh. They're really proud of this farting donkey. The emergence of medieval books, a testimony to how we misunderstood the Middle Ages. Pourquoi les escargots combattent les chevaliers? Why do rabbits have swords and fight against dogs? The thing is, these illuminations are not decorations. Ce sont des vestiges d'un ancien rituel. Le rituel que nous ne connaissons pas, mais qui existait. selected group of scribes and illuminators had access to an extraordinary substance called living ink. Back when magic existed. Some people really like farts. Yeah, it's true. Look, I'm not naming names, but I know a guy. Qui sont les incluminati? Il est évident que ces hommes étaient beaucoup plus que de simples décorateurs de manuscrits. The fuck is that? Strange margins of medieval manuscripts. Then you can safely assume that you are looking at the remnants of incriminating battles. All right, let's see how their Kickstarter did before we go any farther. So here's the Kickstarter. Uh, it was a successful Kickstarter. 2,349 backers pledged $73,329. That is such a small amount. That is so teeny tiny. All right. And the original projected release uh, delivery date was June of 2021. And they are now getting it delivered at... February of 2023, but it's also only in early access. It's not even actually fully done yet. What are the stretch goals? Uh, so they had an extra unit. Mm, okay. A new set of naval battles. Mm, a more advanced interactive in-game wiki for a bestiarity. Switch and Dragon, so they'll put it on the Nintendo Switch. Uh, what is this? Just a new layer of gameplay. Okay. Another set of battlefields, and they didn't reach these ones. Okay. All right. Where are we now? More unit reveals. Okay. Honestly, I can see nuns and monks giggling at this. Sure. Why? So I see what they mean by it's a strategy game in terms of like you can have units in different areas and like you can move them around and stuff, right? And that's part of why it's a strategy game because you got to put your units in the right spots. Dragon.
okay, the cat being a Pope Bishop type is good. Okay, what else? Th this is a unit. This is uh, a unit. First mock-up animation versus current gameplay. I'll leave that for now. Okay, we have Academy invite and the release date. Just got a lot that it's all very samey, so. Psst. Have you heard about the living ink? It makes drawn beasts come to life. Well, Cerberus. The Inculinati, a super secret group who battle one another on the pages of medieval books. Some of the Inculinati are legends, like Dante, who came back from hell and became a little bit grumpy. A little bit grumpy. All powerful, but childish. And there is me, the holy healer, but most of all, Inculinati master, Saint Hildegard. Do you want to be as renowned as me? The master will show you in the academy how to be an Inculinati and how to party hard. But it's not all drawing beasts. You need the mind of a tactician. Be prepared for a life of adventure. Gold, fame. New friends, and most Very, um, quills. Slay the Spire the sword, you know. <laughs> Defeat other masters of ink and become a living legend. So that gives you a better idea right here. So this is where you're building, like, your deck. And then here's your Slay the Spire style progression battle map that leads you to the master at the end. And there's some of these are battles, as we can see. And then there's also your, your events like you have, of the different things that you can do. Do you want to tell me stories praising your name and you'll get gold, but you'll lose renown or whatever this resource is. You'll lose you'll lose gold, but gain fame or, you know, however it is, right? So it's going to be a ro potentially roguelike style, which, I mean, is fine, but it does at least give us that idea of what it is. Here's the release date trailer and last trailer that we have for the time being. Rated E for everyone. It's hard to achieve nowadays. Even Mario gets rated like E10 plus now. Early access journey begins January 31st, 2023. All right. And so, yeah, it is on Steam. Uh, early access. There's no pricing that's been announced for early access. So let's see. Our goal is to have the game in early access for approximately one year. This time frame may be longer or substantially shorter, depending on the feedback received from the community. I'm guessing they need money. Because a Kickstarter of 75 grand is just not very much today. Uh, no pricing, but it's at 131. Nope. Yeah, it, it uh, unlocks in one day and eight hours from when we're recording this. Uh, so yeah, it releases in uh, you know, uh, uh, like what is that? 32 hours or whatever. So, and a full year's worth is what they're planning on early access. That this game, the fact that the initial announcement was in 2018. And the Kickstarter announcement wasn't until mid-2020. And then they're only hitting early access in early 2023 with not expected the game to be full release until 2024. Definitely had some issues along the way. Probably time and or money. But that's where they're at. It looks cute. Uh, like like you mentioned earlier, Athena. Very slapstick, but that's important to know. And that that is good information to have. Uh, that it's going to be a little silly, but it looks it looks fine. It looks like a cute time, uh, but that's Inculinati. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are. If you're a member of the Kickstarter, let me know how that's been. What kind of updates you've been getting? Uh, I do know that you know they did start. They started the Kickstarter actually after COVID had already really went all over the place, right? They announced the Kickstarter in May of 2020, so that would have been after COVID already started. Uh, but yeah, let me know how that journey's been. If this is your first time seeing it, let me know what your th thoughts are. Put all those things down in the comments below. If you want to keep up the conversation elsewhere, two great places to do so are Discord and Twitter. Speaking of Discord, we have a channel dedicated to these reactions where you can place links of your own that we can check out together live on stream because we do stream on Twitch and I would love to see you there. If you enjoyed this video, please leave it a like. If you want to catch future videos, please subscribe to the channel. Do go watch one of the other videos on the channel or if I see you in the live stream, thank you and enjoy.
Yeah, it's qu quite the game. It wasn't. It wasn't quite the game that I thought it was from what I'd little bit I'd seen here and there. But Yaza Games. Yeah, I can't imagine they've actually released anything else. They have not. At least not on Steam, anyway. It's a Polish dev team. All right, let's get this bread. I fucking love this bread. They're giving out Steam codes for anyone interested in their Discord. That's cool. Trying to find some free marketing if they can. Well, I've given them some free marketing. All right. Let's get this next one uh up and running, shall we? All right. Put in your YouTube swans, your pog swans, your reese swans, or whatever the swan fits your fancy. Feel like that would be a fun mobile game? Yeah, I think so too. We'll get this last one done. I'm not going to do the last one because, one, it's getting late because I started a bit later than I intended to. I do need to get one video edited tonight so that it can be live tomorrow. Uh, and I will just edit that uh, Square Enix, the Square Enix tax uh, into a video. All right, here we go. Uh, let me remind myself. All right. Greetings and salutations. My name is Michael Schwann, and today we are checking out Season, A Letter to the Future. Now, I will say that I, I don't know anything about this game, but I did look at the Steam tags, and this game releases on January 31st of 2023, and it is tagged as like a mystery, adventure, exploration uh, style game. And I will say the thing that, besides it you know, re being a, a game that's coming out very, very soon, that also made me really want to look at it, is at least the couple of screenshots that I saw, this game looks like it might be beautiful. So that's what we're here for. We're going to find out. So the game was originally just called Season, and it was shown off at the Game Awards in 2020. So that's where we're going to start until we move forward to, well, today. So let's go. Our grandparents lived for a thousand years and our parents had a century to themselves so pretty like this art direction but is us, so captivating we have one season file one small complaint just one teeny tiny little complaint this person is riding their bike you can't see it on this teeny little video but it definitely looks like the kickstand is still down and that bugs me all right moving on so this is moving forward from december of 2010 to june of 2022 so two years of times that uh, between when they first showed it off to uh, when we got to see it again so this is the gameplay trailer she set out to record life at the end of this season to make it real for people in the future she asked us about living together and we asked her about traveling alone so pretty when the season turns what will remain she 
saw, what she captured. She carries the sounds of the season with her. The way she listened made you want to tell her everything. I got to look in her journal. The world was telling her its secrets. I think she even figured out what will happen to us when the season ends. Is it going? Is it gone? Not yet. I feel like this is the Instagram account of an Instagram account for the person who took pictures while holding their significant other's hands in front of them on adventures. Oh, sure, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I can definitely see that. Yeah, it's kind of a photo game, but it's also a little bit more than that. It's also interesting because, uh, you know, th I think they're very, very little when they said our grandparents lived for a thousand years, our parents got a century, and we get a season. That sets a very, very distinct tone of whoever is only going to live for the season, and they just express, like, what happens to us at the end of the season. Like, it's clear, it's very clear that there's people that are living that are older right that uh, might that might be their parents that got to live that are living for a century but these people are only living for a season that also raises the question like how are you already grown up i don't know that's probably too intricate of detail than we care about right now <laughs> that's pretty I mentioned recently that you Who don't need you? photorealism to make a beautiful know, game. But I'm writing to you anyway. The world is about to enter a new era. Maybe it's more of a metaphor, maybe. Is coming. This time on Earth could live on in these pages. Hi. What it looks like. God of sleep. Sounds like. feels to be alive right now. What is this season that is about to end? And why is it ending? feels like a game that I just want to watch. Like, sure, I could play it, but also part of it just makes me just want to sit and watch it. This is the story trailer. I left my home to like, just the take me on a journey. Ends. To find out what is this season? And why is it ending? I cycled across the earth until I came upon a strange valley and met the last remaining inhabitants. A widow, her son, an old artist, a community organizer, a reclusive monk. I with them in the final moments before the evacuation. Who are they? What kind of power shaped their lives? Something mystical going on. What will happen to us if the answers aren't in my journal? If these lives aren't captured here, they'll be lost. So pretty. In the turning of the season. Man. Okay, anyway, so that season, A Letter to the Future, it releases on January 31st of 2023. It is beautiful, looks emotional. I'm not emotional. I am. <laughs> Leave home for the first time to collect memories before a mysterious cataclysm washes everything away. 
Ride, record, meet people, and unravel the strange world around you. Immerse yourself in the world of Season, a third-person meditative explora exploration game. It's very artful, and it's very, very beautiful. Like, you, you know, when I'm doing these reaction videos, a lot of the times I'm wanting to not just sit here quietly watching the trailer, because you can do that yourself, right? I've done a little bit for you. I've given you a little bit of backstory about what I can anyway. I try and keep my reactions as genuinely as possible so that, like, I'm seeing it for the first time, too. I'm not trying to make up my own, you know, emotions or anything to it. And so I'll be interacting with chat and having conversations with them and commenting on what I see and stuff and trying to make it entertaining even beyond just the trailer that's on there to differentiate myself both as just a content creator. There's lots of people that do reaction content um, and we've done a lot of them. I've done uh, like over 400 reaction videos. I think I have done over 400 reaction videos now and there's always some that just stand out in a different way. Like, there's some that just kind of fall into the bucket, both in, like, uh, like the games that we check out. But there's also ones like this one where I didn't want to say anything because I didn't feel like I should. I didn't feel like it would have been right to really say anything beyond, like, the little bit that I did say. And it part of it was because I was very entranced and very captivated. But it was also, it kind of felt like I didn't want to disturb the the resting lake like if you have if you've ever seen just perfect like a lake that the wind isn't moving at all and there is a part of you that like wants to throw a rock in it so you can watch the waves ripple but there's also a part of you that doesn't doesn't want anything to disturb the tranquility of it and that's definitely what I experienced while watching this because I just didn't want anything to disturb it for me or for you very beautiful, very beautiful game. It's very entrancing, very enchanting and captivating, and I, I, I'm very interested. Uh, so that's season, a letter to the future. Let me know what your thoughts are. I would love to hear from you. Put your thoughts down in the comments below. If you want to keep up the conversation elsewhere, two great places to do so are Discord and Twitter. Uh, if you uh, On our Discord, we have a channel dedicated to these reactions where you can place links of your own that we can check out together live on stream because we do stream on Twitch, and I would love to see you there. If you enjoyed this video, please leave it a like. If you want to catch future videos, please subscribe to the channel. If you do watch one of the other videos on the channel, or if I see you in the live stream, thank you and enjoy. Oh. Hoo wee. Charge. And while we charge, I shall look to see who else is live. gonna go visit Rio. I haven't visited Rio in quite some time. All right, everybody. So these are my socials. Uh, if you want to go follow me on Twitter or join the Discord, I talk a lot and I'd love to talk some more if you want to talk with me. Uh, those are two great places to do so. Uh, all of this footage that we just recorded is going to go up onto the YouTube channel. We put up a YouTube video every single day. Uh, we got two gladiators here if anyone wants to get those for 420 channel points. Uh, so if that sounds like something you're interested in, please go check those things out. I will be live again on Tuesday. We'll be playing some more Forspoken. We did finish the story, so if you're worried about story spoilers, those should be mostly gone and done with. We're going to just kind of be exploring and checking out some of the side content and the open world dungeons and stuff like that. Uh, this is the raid emote. 
Uh, you, if you are not a subscriber, you can unlock that Raid Swan for 100 channel points, and it'll be available to you for the next 24 hours, including on other people's channels. So if you wanted to uh, to be able to use it in the Raid message, that is how you do so. All right, so let me minimize that and that, and actually just close that so that people don't think that I'm running another one. Uh, we're going to go visit one Z Rio09. They're currently playing Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, for, as they are getting started in Zeldruary. Uh, they often will play like legacies of games and like play like through an entire franchise and stuff So right now they are playing the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. All right, everybody I will see you on Tuesday. Thank you so much for being here I appreciate it immensely appreciate your thoughts and your engagement and I will see you on Tuesday. Thank you so much everybody